Hi everyone, uh, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so this is going to be another lesson about the uh, Latka Volterra Predator Prey Model. Um, and I'm actually making this video in response to a comment someone left. So someone left a comment saying that like, in my previous video I um, I showed you guys how to like plot the output of the model as a time series. So showing like the levels of prey and predators over time. But this person commenting uh, wanted to know um, how, how to plot a, um, a uh, phase space uh, a phase space plot and, and that's basically a type of plot that shows like um, instead of showing like the variables over time it shows the uh, variable levels uh, relative to each other so like a phase space plot for the predator prey diagram um, would be showing for example like the level of predators um, plotted against the, the level of the prey uh, so just to show you guys um, an example of what I'm talking about um, so you guys on like a Wikipedia page so this is the output of the predator-prey model um, as a function of time. So this is like the uh, time series output showing the levels of the prey and the predators um, over time. And you can see um, they they oscillate like kind of like the uh, results we got um, in my previous video. Um, but the person commenting on the previous video wanted to know, I think, I think this is what they were asking. I think they wanted to know how to um, plot something like this, a phase space plot. So basically this... Um, and ideally, uh, you'd want to like label these axes, but I'll, I'll assume that this is like the the predators on the uh, vertical axis, axis, and the uh, prey on the uh, on the uh, horizontal axis, and then showing like the level of the predators, um, like plotted against the level of the, of the of the prey. So it's not over time; it's showing like how the variables, um, their levels like relate to each other, and you can plot it like um, for for different parameter sets. So this is showing like different. I think here this is actually like showing different initial conditions, but you can plot this like showing different initial conditions. Um, oh yeah, it says here, yeah, various initial conditions. But yeah, you can like vary the initial conditions or vary like one of the parameters or something and see like how the phase space plot changes. So sometimes for these models, it's like interesting to uh, plot something like this. So I'm just gonna show you guys like in this video how to do this in Python. But yeah, before we get started, I'll just like quickly review the actual model itself. So we have um, two ODEs here. So we're going to be using the uh, variable x to represent the level of the prey and the variable y to represent the level of the predators. And um, so for the prey equation, we just have like, like uh, first of all, just like kind of a regular growth term. So some, some constant alpha times, the, um, times the, the current level of the prey. That's just the uh, growth term um, for the prey. And then we have a death term. Uh, that we, we use some uh, some constant beta and then um, the death term relies on the current level of the prey and also on the current level of the predators why because um, because part of, like part of the thing that's killing the prey is that they're being eaten by the predators so that's why we have uh, that's why we have y in the uh, death term for the prey here and then for the predators um, for the growth term, we have, uh, first of all, so some constant um, delta. And then we have um, we have the current level of the predators like in any like population growth term. But then we also have the level of the prey because for the predator population to be growing, it um, it depends on having enough to eat. So they have to be able to like eat the prey for their uh, population to be growing. And then lastly, the death term for the predators, um, we just have some, some constant um, gamma times the current level of the predators. So like kind of a regular death term. Um, yeah, okay, so let's get started with the uh, with the uh, phase space plot. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I have all this previous code from our previous um, video. So again, like if you guys are wondering where all this code is coming from, I'm gonna refer you guys to my previous video on the predator prey model. I'll link to that in the uh, in the uh, description. And also this, this code's all available on uh, my GitHub too, if you guys wanna download the code. But yeah, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just take all of this, um, all of this code, and I'm just gonna copy it into our new file we're gonna be using. I just call this like uh, phaseplot.py. Um, okay, but so I guess we can just review. I'll just I'll, I'll run this code really quickly just so you guys can remember like what the output of the uh, of the basic predator prey model was. So I'll just like quickly run this to just see where we left off. Yeah, so this is basically, this was the um, result of my previous video's code, and this is showing, like, the, the 
at the time I was using like fish as the prey and bears as the predators for, for my example. So this is showing like a hypothetical fish population like in hundreds um, over time. And then the, the bear population also in hundreds over time. And you can see they have this, uh, this model has the property of like um, of oscillating like this. Uh, because like as the, as the fish population increases, that means the bears are getting enough to eat. So the bear population is increasing. But as the bear population gets higher and higher, they're eating more of the fish. So that causes the uh, fish population to decrease. But then as, as the fish population is decreasing, then the bears aren't getting enough to eat. So then their population also decreases. But if there's less bears, that means there's the fish are better able to survive, so their population increases again, and then it goes in a cycle like that, like it kind of uh, it kind of oscillates like that. So yeah, this was basically like where we left off in my previous um, Python video on this model. So again, if you guys want like um, if you guys want an explanation of like where all this code is coming from, I'll just refer you guys to that previous video. But for now, I'm just going to be like copying and pasting all this into this um, this new file we have. And then I'm going to show you guys how to make this uh, this like phase space plot that we just looked at on the Wikipedia page. Um, okay, so so the first thing the first thing we're going to do is just like edit a bit of this code just to um, yeah get rid of get rid of some of uh, some of these things. We're going to be using only like one plot this time, so we're going to need um, we're going to need only one subplot here. And then we're basically going to be, I'm going to show you guys how to like, how to like vary the um, parameter set, vary like, just for an example, I'll show you guys like how to vary this um, alpha parameter here. And then I'll show you guys like how to plot the, uh, the phase space plots for like a couple of different um, values of alpha. And this is just an example, you guys can like vary any of the parameters or vary like the initial conditions too. But just for example, I'll show you guys like how to vary um, alpha. So, okay, the first, the first one we can do will just be like with our original parameter set. So this one, the original one was for alpha equals 1.1. So I'll just like make a note here, alpha equals 1.1. And then, um, then we'll do it again, um, changing alpha a little bit. So we're the, the, second, the second simulation we're gonna do is gonna be, let's just make alpha um, 0 0.9, like vary it a little bit, but, um, but not too much. And then, so we'll just we'll, we'll just run the simulation again um, with alpha being 0 0.9. Call this output um, y2. And then, um, yeah. So lastly, we'll just do one more simulation. This time, making alpha um, make it 1.3, varied varied a little bit more in the other direction. Um, and then call this output um, y3. So now we have the output of three different um, three different simulations of this model. Um, varying the uh, alpha parameter a little bit and, and keeping everything else held constant. Um, but yeah, so now, now our goal is to plot, um, I'll just show you guys again here. We're just going to plot something like this, like relating the two variables to each other. And we're going to plot it for these three different values of alpha that we just picked out. Um, okay. Um, and again, I know I'm like recycling a lot of the code here, but yeah, again, if you guys like want to see where all this code is coming from, I'll just refer you guys to my, uh, my previous video on it. Um, uh, okay. So now let's do the actual plot. Um, so we're going to say, start with like the first one, um, just called line one, uh, comma equals. That's just some like matplotlib syntax, um, say X one plot. And then, um, so our output is coming like in this matrix Y. So in the, in previous videos, we've been plotting like we've been we've been plotting like the um, columns in this matrix against the time output. But here, instead of doing this, instead of plotting against time, we're going to plot um, one of the variables against the other variable. So we're going to plot this uh, this first column, which is um, the first column is the uh, prey level. And then we're going to plot that against the uh, the second column, which is the predator level. So instead of plotting against um, our time output, we're plotting just the uh, level of the um, predator against the level of the prey. So that's the syntax there. Um, okay, and we'll uh, give this a color, make this uh, make this blue, and then let's also give it a label so that we can like keep track in our um, in our uh, phase plot of like which which. Um, plot corresponds to which uh, parameter set. So we'll label it, um, label it as, um, 
alpha equals uh, 1.1. That was our that was our first one. Um, okay. So yeah, that's good for our um, our, our first plot. And then uh, let's just make we'll copy this, make a uh, second line for our um, our second simulation with the second parameter set. So this one, all we're going to do is just um, use our our y two output matrix. That was our output from the second simulation, and the alpha in that case was um, zero point nine. And then um, again, just the same thing again uh, for our third um, parameter set. We use um, y three. That was the uh, the output of that um, third simulation. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Yeah, we better make it a different color uh, for our uh, for our second one. Instead of making it blue, we'll make it red for the second one, and then maybe maybe green for the third one. Um, by the way, I'm colorblind, so for me, this like the the red and the green are gonna look like exactly the same. But I'm just kind of doing this for you guys. But yeah, for me, the the red and the green will be exactly the same because I'm I'm uh, have trouble with those colors. But hopefully, we'll help uh, the viewers to see the difference. Um, and yeah, the alpha for this one was um, 1.3. Um, okay, so now we have. Uh, oh yeah, the last thing is we need to uh, make our, our our legend here um, to get all these labels actually in um, in the plot. So plt dot legend. Oh, and we want some labels too because yeah, it's like I said, like in the in the Wikipedia example, um, they didn't label these axes, but I think it's a good practice, like ideally to always like label your plots and like label the uh, axes in your plots. So. Um, We'll make sure to label ours here. Um, so I'll say uh, set um, x label, and um, yeah, the x the x axis will be uh, will be the prey, right? Because yeah, you're using the uh, first column of the uh, output matrix. You know, so the x label will be prey, and then the um, y label is going to be the predators. Um, I think we're saying like um, in the example I was doing, I was giving these units like in hundreds. So we're not only talking about like literally like 10 fish and one bear. I was talking about like 10 100 fish and like 100 bears. Um, to be honest, I'm not I'm not like an ecologist or like a wildlife biologist. So I don't even really know like what is the appropriate unit to use here. But I'll just say like, I'll just say hundreds for now. Maybe that's a little bit more realistic than like only like one bear and like 10 fish. Um, it was called like hundreds for now. Um, okay, and hopefully this uh, hopefully this will work okay and give us what we want. Um, yeah, okay, let's give it a try. Uh, okay, phase plot dot pi. Um, okay, so it seems like it worked. It worked okay. It worked uh, the way we were expecting it. So we have our um, three different plots here. Um, and they're all labeled according to which uh, which alpha we were using. And again, this is just the point of this is to like vary one of the parameters or possibly like vary the initial conditions and like see what the difference is um, in how the variables like relate to each other um, based on like changing this one parameter. So here we changed alpha. You guys can change any of the other parameters or change like the initial conditions, and then you can see like how the um, how the level of the predators uh, relates to the level of the prey. So again, this is just called a um, phase space plot. This is used a lot in like dynamical systems modeling. If you want to see like how the uh, variables are relating to each other, and like how um, like what what states the system can be in, um, people use these plots a lot. And again, I just want to say thanks to the person who commented on my previous video. Thanks for like um, requesting this because this is like an important uh, an important plot to know how to make. So this is just um, yeah for you guys to know this is something. Um, it's not only used for the predator prey model, it's used a lot in like all kinds of like dynamical systems. Uh, but yeah, it's good to know how to like plot something like this. Um, okay guys, so like usual, I'll put this code on my GitHub. If anyone has any questions, uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, and uh, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, see you next time.